Hello everybody, today we are performing a DAT on a patient who had a positive auto control in the antibody screen. This patient is O positive and I have already labeled my tubes um, with the poly specific uh, anti IgG and uh, C3D and then I have my anti IgG uh, and anti C3D. So if the poly is positive, then one of these two should be positive as well, which would indicate why the poly was positive because the poly has both of these in there. Okay, so if this one is positive, then we need to know um, as to why um, those red cells in the auto control were sensitized and by what. Okay, so I am going to add a drop of my patient's three to five cell suspension to each of those tubes. All right, so we have one drop, one drop, one drop. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, wash those cells three times and um, then we're gonna get continue on with the actual test. So here we go. All right, so I'm adding my normal saline all the way three times, sorry, three quarters of the way up the tubes, roughly. I'm going to centrifuge them and then continue that process. Sorry, um, I'm going to empty the, I need to make a weight, hold on. So I need to make a balance in order to not make my serifuge off balance. So. Um, I have all of the tubes in there. I'm going to do the 15 seconds. So I'll do my three washes, dump them out in between each one and then decant all the way on the uh, third wash. And then I will, uh, then we'll move on to the next step and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I just did my uh, washes and I decanted all the way okay and now I'm going to add my reagents so I have my poly IgG C3D here and I'm going to add um, one drop of each okay so that's one I buy um, the green anti-IgG so that it will um, stand out <laughs> and we won't accidentally mix up some stuff. So we're doing one drop of that. Okay. And then we're going to do one drop of the C3D, anti-C3D. Okay. All right, so now that we've done that, we've done poly-specific of both, which has many epitopes, and then we have mono-specific of the other two, which is going to um, just detect the one. And so we're gonna gently swirl them and then put them into the serifuge. Okay, that is no longer needed. Put a blank one in. Okay, 15 seconds. Come on. Oh my gosh, I will do this off camera. Okay, so we're back and I just got these out of the center, the C-refuge. Okay, so the poly, oh my goodness, the poly is very positive. Okay, 
So we got a three. So we're going to write that down. So three plus poly and then uh, we have a positive but not so strong of a positive of the IgG. Okay, so we're going to call that a one or a two. Let's go two. Okay, and then let's see the complement. Okay, the complement is negative. So that means we are expecting that it was the IgG that is sensitizing the red cells. So also known as coding the red cells. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add check cells to um, this anti-C3D since we had a negative here. So here, here are our results. We have the DAT results of 3 plus, 2 plus. So I'm going to remove these columns actually. Um, but we have the poly specific was 3 plus, the mono uh, IgG was 2 plus. And um, then we're going to add check cells to the negative one, which is this. So hold on just a second. Sorry about that. I had to shake up. Well, not shake. I had to resist my check cells. So I'm adding check cells to the C3D. And then I'm going to spin that and make sure that it goes positive. Okay. That is balanced. All right working this time. All right, I'll show you what I have in a second. Okay, so I got my C3D out and it is positive with the check cells in it. Okay, so that means we did everything right and everything is good. So we have a um, IgG auto antibody on this patient. And uh, the next thing that we would do is to try to get the antibody off of the red cell because we cannot do an antibody identification panel if the red cell has the antibody on it. So this is what has happened. We've got antigens on the red cell, right? And here we have our own antibody that is antibody and it's something, it's IgG something, but it in testing um, in the 37 phase and the H AHG phase, we had sensitization happening in the 37 phase and we had, um, so we had the IgG antibody coming onto the, pa the patient's own red cells, um, as shown up here, and uh, they formed um, a bond onto the antigens corresponding to the antibody, of which we don't know what it is. So this is the patient's IgG antibody. So when we added, when we added the AHG reagent, that reagent is anti-human IgG, anti-human IgG and C3D. Um, it, in this case, we're just going to say anti-human IgG. And it bound to that antibody, it's labeled, and it made, it made an agglutination reaction because it's going and binding the FC portion of all of um, the antibodies that were on the patient's own red cells. Okay, so that's why we got an agglutination here too, because um, in between the 37 phase, um, we had done washes, gotten rid of all the ones that are floating around in the patient's, um, in the patient's uh, tube. We got rid of any unbound uh, antibodies of the patients um, from their plasma 
And so the only ones that were left were the ones that were bound to their own red cell. So then we added a reagent that had antibody in it, um, and then we read our AHG, and there, was, there wasn't a check cell area here because um, none of them were negative. Um, but that is why we got a um, agglutination reaction here and an agglutination reaction here. So when they're all positive and the auto control is positive, you're thinking of an autoantibody. Okay, so now that we've done the DAT, we found out that it definitely is an IgG, and then uh, we now need to pool, pool these um, IgG antibodies off of the patient's red cells into a liquid in order to figure out what it is. So we would then test the liquid on an antibody identification panel. And that process is called elution. Okay, and so we have an elution kit here that we're gonna uh, get started in another video and uh, we'll show you what happens there. But this is um, the elution kit that we're gonna use, okay? All right, well, um, please watch the next video. It's an elution video. It will not be labeled as DAT part one or two or anything like that. So um, DAT always comes before an elution because the idea is you want to pull the uh, patient's antibody off of the red cell um, so that you can identify what that antibody actually is. And you cannot do that if it's on the red cell. Okay, so I will catch you in the elution video. And thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you later. Bye.